when I was in high school, and no, it wasn't that long ago, okay? I read a piece by Whitman, Song of Myself. Maybe you know it. In which he says, do I contradict myself? Very well then, I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. And this hit me because it was exactly how I felt. Like there were these different parts of me, different voices in my head, and I didn't always know which part to take, which voice to listen. So raise your hand if you have ever felt like that before. So we have a room of multiple personalities. Great. <laughs> That's what I learned. I learned that a lot of us struggle with this. And the funny thing is I remembered exactly the first time that it happened to me. I was around nine years old, growing up in Croatia, and I had a very best friend. Her name was Lana. Lana and I, we did everything together. We played together every day. We went to school together. We sat in the same bench. We were inseparable, like sisters. And then one day, on our regular way to school, she says to me, we can no longer be friends. And I cannot explain it. There was something about the way she said it that made me understand immediately she really meant it. Why? I asked. Well, because you're Serbian and I'm Croatian and we are at war with each other. It was in that moment that I understood I'm not only losing my very best friend, I'm losing life as I knew it. Because Lana was right. She was Croatian and I was Serbian. I was also Croatian. And up until that point, I was neither of those things. I was just being me. And that was potentially the last time I remembered just being me. Shortly after that, my dad, who's Serbian, had to flee from Croatia because he was trying to save his life. And my mom, who is Croatian, decided to stay at home with my sister and myself. The only problem was, there was no home anymore. A home is a place where you feel safe, protected, where you belong. And that place was broken for me. My country was broken, my home was broken, my heart was broken. You see, for the outside world to know that I was Serbian in Croatia, meant risking my safety on an everyday way to school, meant being verbally abused by your teachers, physically assaulted by your peers, and completely outcasted by your family. To the point where your own uncle, who used to buy you candy every Sunday, comes to your backyard with a Kalashnikov threatening to shoot you all. So, to make things normal, I started telling myself a story. And the story I started telling myself and others around me was that my dad, he wasn't really Serbian, he was Bosnian. And our family didn't live in the heart of a war zone, but somewhere in the outskirts of Croatia. And we didn't really visit them because we're not so close. You see, back then, the only way I knew how to survive was to choose one half and hide the other. So that's what I did. And hopefully this is not your story. You may never have to hide that you're one nationality when you're actually two. And I mean, here in Amsterdam, we live in the most diverse city in the world. And I'm sure you have plenty of examples, like today, of beautiful multiculturalists thriving together. And yet, I bet you, in some ways, you are fragmented. It may not be as big as hiding where you're coming from, but maybe you're just hiding something from your parents because you're afraid they will not love you the same. Or maybe you're just hiding something from your friends because you're afraid they will judge you for it. Not showing up as your whole self 
is the biggest pain you can inflict upon yourself. And I see it time after time, people coming at a point in their life where they are desperate to collect these different parts of them and be whole again. So if I'm telling you my story today here for the very first time, it's in my hope that I activate you to step into your wholeness sooner rather than later. To follow my story with Lana, with whom I never spoke again, I saw that there were different ways that I just continued to fragment myself further. For example, when I was 17, there was this guy. There's always a guy or a girl when you're 17, right? And I was so madly in love with him. I mean, madly. The problem was that the girl he was in love with was a skinnier, more religious, more Croatian version of me. And so I tried so hard for years to be that version instead of trying hard to be my whole self. And further along, after university, I started applying for jobs and I figured I could really fit into the corporate world as long as I show a part of myself. Soon enough, I landed this amazing job that on paper was so impressive, only that it required me to hold back on all of my dreams and values. And unfortunately, I did. See, showing up as only a part of ourselves is something we all do. And my question for you here today is, is it really necessary? Or is it simply a choice? Sometimes a subconscious choice, but choice nonetheless. Choice made out of convenience, maybe out of fear. Fear of not getting enough likes on Instagram, fear of not being enough, fear of not being liked or not being loved for who we truly are. I often ask myself, how different would my life have been if instead of choosing fear, I chose courage? How different would all have been if instead of hiding from those nationalists and bullies, I choose to show up whole as my true self? If instead of suffering in silence for years, I had the courage to confide with somebody and speak my truth, how would that all be different? It's impossible to answer that question today. But today, we get to choose how we want to live. See, today, we're all living in a world where everything is known. We can no longer say, oh, I didn't know that was happening, or just look another way. We're living in a world where showing up as our whole self is a matter of integrity, not only choice. And I trust that you know that. I do. I trust that we are the generation that is not only asking ourselves, what do I want to do after high school? But you're asking yourself the important question, who do I want to be? What do I want to stand for? What is the impact that I want to have in this world? Right? And because I trust that, I dare to ask more of you. I ask that you be a different Lana. I ask that you don't be a friend who allows others to tell her who she can be friends with, or who she can go to school with, or who she can fall in love with. I'm asking you to be a Lana that tomorrow will not accept to work for an organization that is paying her female colleagues less than her male ones, or paying her male colleagues more than her female ones. And to be that Lana, we have
have to step away from our fears. We have to step away from our comfort zones and step into our courage. Because only that Lana is the kind of leadership that we need today, is the kind of leader that will step into their courage and allow others to do the same. Because only when we show up holy, we give space for others to do the same. So my invitation is for you to step into your courage, even when it's confusing, even when we don't know how to do it. And I'm going to offer you a trick. Because step is such a small word. It's a movement. It's one step. S-T-E-P. So when you feel like things are a bit too much, I invite you to first start with an S. Stop. Give yourself permission to pause. Nothing will happen if you simply allow yourself to say, you know what, I don't know how to handle this right now. I need to pause and reflect. And then T, tell somebody. Tell your friend, your parents, your mentors, your coaches, your teachers. Tell about your fears, your doubts, about what's going on. Because only that that remains unspoken can continue to torture you for years. And then E, envision. Envision, close your eyes and think about who do I want to be one year, five years, ten years from now. What kind of life do I want to design for myself? What kind of world do I want to live in? And once the path is clear, then you can step into P, proceed and proceed with purpose, proceed with action. Make sure that your voice counts. And I want to end with an anecdote that just happened a few years back. I have two boys, Toma, who is now seven, and Milo, who is five. And as you can imagine, they fight a lot. I mean, a lot. And me and my husband, we figured out, okay, there's nothing we can do to stop them from fighting. We might as well help them fight better, smarter, <laughs> safer. So we enrolled them in judo. And the first class of judo, teacher puts everybody in one big line and asks them, okay, boys and girls, what is the one thing you need to take care of before you fall? You're like giggling, <laughs> not knowing what to answer. And the only kid with his hand up is my youngest one, Milo. So the teacher says, okay, Milo, what is one thing you need to take care of before you fall? And he answers, my brother. That's my point, you guys. We are neurobiologically designed to have each other's back. We are neurobiologically wired to show up fully, one for another. We feel good when we do good for others. So I know, I know, we have what it takes to create a more courageous, accepting, inclusive world. And all we need to do is just step into our wholeness. 